no giving me soup. Respectfully stepping on a net capo status, discretion TV. Let's talk about it. Suge breaks his silence and throws Veggie Jr. under the bus. Veggie and his dad. Keefe D said Reggie Sr. was Suge's hitman. Keefe D said when he went to go pick up the 60K, the 60 bands with Orlando. He saw Reggie Sr., not Jr., with Shook. Now, my whole thing with Shook, listen, man. There's too much audio tapes for you and that podcast that you sitting on to have step with the truth. Pac fans want to know why was Veggie Jr.'s name on those death row contracts? I don't think Shook and that podcast seen it. Who's gonna run this company? Reggie. Uh, well, what do you mean? Defro? He would he would much rather see it turn over to Reggie. James met him one time and Pac put James on his pockets. But according to their words, they had something to do with Tupac's death. Of course the other motherfucker you talked to and you cool with their words, they had something to do with Tupac's death. The crazy thing about all this, the rap pop guys, those crooked cops, I didn't know them. They never worked for me. But they work for Snoop. Just recently found that out. They're friends of Snoop's. Kevin Gates, did you ever come in from Texas or something like that? From Buffalo Records? But I know you came from Buffalo Records, but you might have been from that life. He's in town now? No. No. He got something where they trying to say that they got pictures of... No. Of, of, of check stamps and stuff like that from Buffalo Records. No. Never. Okay. Okay. What about the nightlife? Nope. What about the nightlife? Nope. What about the nightlife? Nope. Wonder what they killed shit, bro. Cause I'm gonna make sure they killed you, me, and everybody else. Yeah, you know, you know, I could not check that. I a whole lot of things, but I ain't that scammer. Yeah, I'm still a killer. Hey, lie. Hey, lie. Hey, why yeah. would I want a paper trail when I never brought him around nowhere? Exactly. That's all I need. So if I'm gonna hide him in secret, you think I'm gonna find? I'm gonna let somebody catch a paper trail? Even when he worked with, and I don't even think he's the one that worked. He got his friends to do it. They were paid cash by Snoop. Yeah, you know, we can just speculate. Because we no more speculating than questions no more because you motherfuckers so smart, y'all stupid. Y'all done said everything you can possibly say to put the fucking rope around your own motherfucking neck. Now you're going to backslide? It's impossible. Reggie Jr. got into some shit. Big Reg wanted me to hire him. He said, give him a job doing anything. Right? So I said, well, it can't work for me directly at none of these guys. So I helped Reggie Jr. to set up right way security. I laid the thing to help him out. And all this stuff about Reg said, he told me that the homies, a couple of homies wanted to do something to me, kidnap me and whatever, right? Well, he report that to his superiors. So that's not paint a picture that's not true. But it's still... I respect, but I get it. You guys get paid to do those interviews. But there's so much other things you can talk about. Force corruption in the city or the, or the PD or, you know, chairs. One thing for sure. One thing for certain. Everyone claims and thinks, the whole world thinks, that Pac got shot and later died because he was a man of vanity man. Everyone but Snoop. This is Snoop words why Pac ended up dead. You know me, I keep the receipts. But at the same time, I did a whole lot of great things for Snoop with Snoop. Snoop, you know my motto. A man don't be a bitch about it. He said once, you should be able to say it twice. If you can't say it twice, don't say it once. So I'm gonna tell you like this. Once you repeat what you say to some of us, repeat it. About the part when you said, Pac is dead. He got killed because he was running around being radical. Radical, that's your words. It was way more aggressive than that. 
And the crazy thing about it, I, myself, always gave you love, respect, even when your own turned against you, we were with you. For this to happen, this to be in my knowledge, you should express yourself and say exactly what you say. Being with Puffy, Keithy, Quickie Cops, that ain't gangster. Now, Reg, I've been knowing you and your whole family. Your sisters, your relatives, your father. Your uncle had the same force as me. Your uncle was a police child. I had the convertible, a turbo, sledding those Porsche, the rag. Your um, uncle had the hard top. His one turbo, but it was the same force. And he was a cop. Your whole family was cops or probation officers. Nothing wrong with that. And I don't have nothing against none of you people. I'm not gonna bring up who stole or who lied on me. Don't care. Because it's not about trying to put you down. But at the same time, you never came to the hospital. And if you did, you didn't come talk to me. I damn sure didn't tell you, oh, side side Crips that shot us. You called it, I believe you told someone uh, right after the shooting, not long after the shooting. How did you know so quickly that the shooting had even taken place? I mean, I didn't know until I went to the hospital and we were sitting around, everybody crying. And then and, and I went, went in the emergency room and talked to shields and stuff. Why would you say that? When uh, when were you aware of what happened in Vegas? Was it the night Tupac was shot or was it later on on the 13th when he passed away? No, it was the night he was shot. Um, Reggie Wright Sr. was our boss. He was lieutenant in charge of the gang unit. His son, Reggie Wright Jr., was the head of rightway security. So naturally they talked. So after the night uh, Tupac was shot, um, they talked and um, Reggie ended up hearing what happened. So he called Tim and I, we were on our days off. And he told us, hey man, Ch I mean, uh, Chug and uh, uh, Tupac just got shot in Vegas and we're hearing it sounds like Crip. He goes, man, he goes, it's coming back to Compton, so you got, y'all better get ready, because it's coming. And sure enough, it did. Rich, your mother raised you way better than that. And I'm not trying to be funny or jokingly or nothing. Your mother's an incredible mother. Like my mother was a incredible woman. That's what we had good in Compton. And that's what we all had in common. Now, I'm gonna give you some credit. <laughs> you more street than slicker than James. Rich, you can never be the type of cop James is. James is way better cop than you. <laughs> he didn't sit more up to the penitentiary from the hood than anybody. You know, other things is this. I never, ever, ever gave Orlando Anderson a dollar for me personally. Red's father, Big Red, said that on the interview, they said. The crazy thing about all that is that Lando Anderson was suing Tupac for beating his ass. So all these lies and stuff, it's a bush, number one. Number two, my sister, best friend is a woman named Sheila, who's married to Danny Sneed. Danny Sneed was a top-ranked guy in the Compton PD and the sheriffs. We was doing what it was a case, a premiere, I hired Danny Sneed to do the security and all that type of stuff. After he was doing it, there was a lot of negative things going on for his, the company's name. He felt it would be in his best interest not to keep moving forward. Now, Reggie Jr. got into some shit. Big Reg wanted me to hire him. He said, give him a job doing anything, right? So I said, well, he can't work for me directly at none of these guys. So I helped Reggie Jr. to fill up right way security. I laid the thing to help him out. And all this stuff about Red said he told me that the homies, a couple of homies wanted to do something to me, kidnap me or whatever, right? Well, did he report that to his superiors? So let's not paint a picture that's not true. But it's still a respect level. I get it. You guys get paid to do those interviews. But there's so much other things you can talk about force corruption in the city or or the PD or you know sheriffs 
I never complained about the sheriffs use my luxury box in a staple center. I Orlando testified listen, on Shug's behalf. Listen, listen. The day before that, Lane called me, say, uh, bring two guns up to ED office and come down. So I came, came with scrap, I got a scrap. And we waited about five, 10 minutes later. Reggie Sr., not Jr. Everyone assumed that Shug paid him off. That was done between the attorneys. I was there. How it happened was... Uh, Reggie Sr., not Jr., and Reynolds, Sergeant Reynolds, came with Shug Knight up there. I guess he wanted to show his hitmans who to kill. They're working for you at the time? Yeah, well, you know, Reggie called me uh, a couple hours after the shooting had occurred. You know, they were at the scene and Reggie went to the hospital and he called me. I was at home, sleep, not in Vegas. And then Reggie called me and said, hey, Dad, Tupac and Shug just got shot. And then he told me he thought Tupac was dead. And he said, Suge was okay. He had got grazed. And uh, and they investigating it all. Uh, and then he told me basically who he had believed or was hearing was involved because he wasn't there at the shooting. Yeah. He was told, and he was told me it was Southside and why, how it happened, and they were in the car and all that. So we immediately started investigating that the next day, you know, what the information Reggie was giving me. Okay. I tried to get the information to La Las Vegas PD, as Reggie was telling me, but when they heard the name Reginald Wright, knowing from the scene there was a security Reginald Wright at the scene, Compton, former Compton PD, they con they conflated that they came up with that was me. And so when I was calling to try to give them information, they didn't want to deal with me. Huh. So and later on, when it got deeper, we started having shootings the next day between mob and Looters and Southside. Uh, eventually, we had to start investigating that, but the chief took me off the case because of the conflict. Because you know, right? Well, because a war basically broke out in Compton it, right after. Definite, definite. We. Uh, how many people got shot? Oh, uh, within the three days after the shooting, I think we had at least three or four looter part of uh, uh, Peru uh, shot. Well, more shot. But I think we had two or three homicides behind it. Wow. And then over in uh, Southside, uh, we had a couple uh, incidents there that we had to investigate. Yeah, naturally, but they were shootings because of that shoot. Okay. Well, what were your informants telling you in terms of what happened in Vegas? Basically, what you had uh, uh, aforementioned in, in the scenario of how it happened. Yeah. Uh, that was the basis for it because both sets knew who the players were in the shooting. Mm. They knew it was Southside that did the shooting. So naturally the retaliation is gonna start going. So I think the blood started it in the morning because I think they ended up shooting uh, Darnell Brim uh, that one, and, a, and a female uh, coming out of a store. And then from there, they retaliated because of that and went and shot a couple of bloods and it, and it was on, it was on. Okay. And uh, Keefe D said that you actually approached him and some other people and basically warned him about, you know, your son being a target in this whole war that was breaking out. Well, exactly what happened, contrary to what Keefe D said, uh, exactly what happened is, as I say, the, the chief pulled me off of a leading the investigation and put my sergeant, Bobby Baker, in charge of... Uh, investigating all the shootings as a result of the uh, shooting in Vegas. So I was upstairs working, but I still was getting information in the streets about what was happening. And the word came out that they were going to shoot Reggie as part of the back and forth and the Southsiders were after him. Well, I took that personally and I jumped in the car and it wasn't even a, it was a, my black or, it wasn't a patrol car or anything. And I went straight to Keefe D's house, his mother's house, actually, because I knew the family. I knew them before. That's another way I knew Keefe D. I, he was smaller and younger when I worked for the Edison Company. I knew his mom real well because I used to had to deal over there. And so uh, with Edison, you know, 
And and so I knew him. So I went because I knew uh, uh I forget Keefy D's brother name, who was a little harder than Keefy D. But and Orlando was still out. So I didn't want them targeting Reggie. So I deliberately went there, knowing the family, and went to the house. When I drove up there at the house and parked, and he said the only thing he said right was I parked on the wrong side of the street and jumped out the car. I did. Because I wanted to get to the family, let them know they were going to have to go through me if anything happened to my son. And I remember three or four guys hanging out in the front of the house, but I paid them no attention. None of them were Orlando, who I knew. Keefe D, I didn't know him from Adam. Uh, you know, I knew of him, but I don't remember what he looked like. I don't even remember if he was in the crowd. And I went in the house and I uh, talked with, I believe his sister or something, Orlando's mother. I, I think was in the house at the time, but it was a female. And I blurted out about if anybody come after Reggie or targeting Reggie, they had to go through me and, you know, say my little piece, turn around, and I left. Now, going out, I did say something to somebody out there, but I'm not knowing who it was. It wasn't any of the main guys that I know. And Keefe D could have been one of them. But I didn't like know it was Keefe D and threaten him or nothing. I just got in my car and I left. And that's the way it happened.